Right, so I'm going to talk about the Apple Watch, and yeah, you might have other sleep trackers, but this is the this is a sleep tracker that I've been using to track my sleep and also optimize my. I haven't actually had a lucid dream, you know, as a result of this work, but I want to talk about my experience with the Apple Watch as a sleep tracker. So, and I'll probably overlay some footage of the actual Apple Watch and you know going through the settings and everything like that. But the Apple Watch itself is a really good sleep tracker, and there's a few features I want to talk about this. But firstly you should know that it's not cheap, except if you get the Apple Watch 3, which is the one I've got, which is now only £190, so like, I guess, just over €200, Euros or $200. It's not cheap straight off the bat, and it doesn't come with the default sleep tracker, meaning it doesn't have, like, um, the other Apple Watch health settings, you know, where it has, like, step counter and all of that stuff, but the sleep tracker that you can get, which is, I think it's £3, you can get... Um, you can buy a third party one for three pounds or you can pay an extremely you know high price for a recurring one you can pay like eight pounds a month for you know a more luxury premium sleep tracker i've tested both and i have to say the one that's three pounds basically does everything you need it to do um there's not really any reason to pay for the recurring one unless you just have money to throw away so yeah i'll be overlaying some footage of you know the actual app itself and why i think it's good but here's a few things that you might want to know about how the Apple Watch tracks sleep and also just a few warnings and yeah, tips and things like that. So firstly, if you do have lots of tattoos like I do, especially tattoos on the wrist area, um, it's not going to work as well as it should. Especially if you have dark, um, thick tattoos on the wrist like this one, for example, you, you will find that the Apple Watch heart rate laser, the infrared laser, can't really penetrate through the ink so you don't get an accurate reading. And this is really annoying. This is nothing. There's nothing we can really do about this, um, apart from just wait for them to make a better Apple Watch that can, you know, read through the, the tattoo ink. But I did find a work. In my case, I did find a workaround because on this particular wrist, there seems to be like a gap in the ink. You know, just where these um, this uh, particular part of the tattoo is, there's a little gap there, and the laser can go through the gap. So it works for me. But if you have really solid tattoo. Um, sections on your wrist it's not going to work so yeah bear that in mind most people don't have wrist tattoos however so 90 percent of people will be fine um but if you do then it's a bit annoying it does limit the features you can use like for example the wrist detection doesn't work as well and also the um, passcode function doesn't work as well because those rely on the sensor it needs to be able to tell when you're not wearing it in order for it to lock the apple watch for the for the 90 percent of you who don't have wrist tattoos it's fine and I think it's gonna be a really good sleep tracker for you. So, here's how the sleep tracking function works. It doesn't detect body temperature, and it has a very limited way of working out which sleep stage you're in, and it does that by basically movement, and also um, the, just the, the algorithm, which works out things like what time it is, your usual sleep routine and, and pattern, and it, it calculates that based on a rolling four day average. So if it knows that you go to bed roughly at 10 p.m., and then one night it detects that you moved a little bit as you were going to sleep. It knows that you're probably trying to fall asleep at 10, at 10 p.m. even though you're still moving. So it's quite clever in that sense. It can work out, you know, when you should be sleeping and when you probably are not sleeping. Um, but it mainly tracks things through the heart rate sensor and the accelerometer, the gyroscope. So it does know roughly when you're moving. It knows when you should be sleeping. And then on the app itself, it gives you a readout of what stage of sleep you're in and how much you are moving. This is quite important for working out your sleep quality because obviously in low deep sleep stages, you shouldn't be moving much. You should be quite still. Um, and it also combines that with your heart rate throughout the night as well. So you can kind of tell you know, what your sleep quality is like. It gives you a readout of your heart rate variability in the morning, which is very useful for if you're, if you're exercising or doing HIIT training or something, you need to know your heart rate variability. And I explained more about that on my other channel about biohacking really. Um, it's not really a lucid dreaming um, metric but it's quite useful to know it's quite useful to know that it can track that so yeah the app can track things like deep sleep light sleep and being awake obviously when your phone is moved and it can do all this quite accurately and then as you go throughout you know uh, a period of days and weeks you can actually write notes on your sleep as well so you can write like for example last night I got more deep sleep than usual and the only thing I changed was I didn't wear a shirt or socks to bed so I guess, you know, you can guess like what things affected your sleep quality. So in this case, I would say that my, I probably got more deep sleep because my body could lower my body temperature more easily because I wasn't wearing a shirt. 
So things like that are really useful, you know, being able to write notes along the uh, alongside each day, almost like a sleep journal. In terms of actually um, giving you actionable insights, it is really good because you can look back, like I said, and you can tell which things had an impact on your sleep quality. In my case, wearing a shirt or not, wearing socks, you know, whether the, whether the window was open or, you know, what time you went to bed, these things all have a big impact on your sleep quality. So that's an interesting thing to, to think about. Another thing is if you want to learn how to, if you want to do, um, I guess you could say sleep hacking, if you want to use your sleep quality data to lucid dream, that's also quite easy because here's what you can do. You can look back after you've collected about a week of data and you can look and easily see which, what times you fall asleep and when during the night you enter your deep sleep. So you can actually kind of guess when your REM sleep will be as well. Really interesting uh, function because although it doesn't tell you when your REM sleep is, it tells you when your deep sleep is, you can kind of guess based on that your sleep cycle, especially when you think about the fact that the new Apple Watch, so I think the new one is like the five or the six or something like that, it's hundreds of dollars, okay? But the Apple Watch 3, which is the one I have, is only $200. And the difference in price is amazing, but the, the features that it has are very similar. So you're actually getting a huge amount of features just for $200. And uh, yeah, I love a bargain, I love a good deal. So in my opinion, that's a really good deal. So if you're considering getting some sort of lucid dreaming device or you know, an expensive sleep tracker, yeah, this is kind of an expensive sleep tracker, but it can do so much more than that. And I'm gonna get onto how, you know, what else it can do for lucid dreaming as well. But it really can do a lot. By the way, if you are watching these videos regularly, I really appreciate when you leave comments. I'll try and reply to everyone. It really does help the engagement and stuff like that. So anyway, so the Apple Watch, going back to the auto sleep app, which is what it's called, by the way, the, uh, the sleep app I'm using, it does, uh, it does also give you reminders based on, your, based on your last week of sleep data. It tells you when you should be going to bed in order to get your, uh, the minimum amount of sleep that you need to restore your, your sleep debt or credit or whatever. So that's useful. Really useful to know that because you can work out the best time to go to bed. Going back to lucid dreaming, here's how it's useful. Okay, so not only can you use it to, to work out when your sleep stages happen, how long they last, and roughly what time you wake up naturally, but by knowing that, so in my case, I know that I wake up naturally about 7.30 to 8, p, to 8 uh, a.m. <laughs> p.m. would be crazy. So I wake up roughly between 7.30 and 8, 8 a.m. So that, because I know that, I can then count back about 45 minutes, and I know that I'll probably be in REM sleep around that time, or you know, I can, I can tweak it, I can say, right, Tomorrow I'll wake up 45 minutes earlier and try and hit REM sleep in order to in order to do uh, a wake wet to bed. The next day, if that doesn't work, I can you know go back a bit further and you can write notes in the actual sleep app itself. Very useful if you're trying to lose a dream. But beyond that, and this is the reason I really love the Apple Watch for sleep tracking, being able to track your sleep is incredibly valuable. Being able to work to actually know how much high quality sleep you're getting is going to it's the most important thing you could know. If you're tracking things like, if you're journaling, if you're meditating, you're tracking your calories, or you know, if you have any interest in like optimizing your body, um, you know, trying to tweak things and, and work out what, what you can do to make yourself feel and perform better. So I would say sleep is the number one thing. It's like the most important thing. And I'm not just saying that because I'm biased because I have a channel about dreaming. It genuinely is like, um, what it's quite, people, people refer to sleep as a force amplifier. So whatever you're trying to do, if you sleep better, your, your output in that thing is going to be better. And this, this applies to everything. You know, if you're trying to recover, boost your immune system from a virus, by the way, coronavirus, um, whatever it is, sleep will help you with that. So it's really important to track your sleep and actually see, because yeah, you might be sleeping nine hours a night, but if you're only getting 10 minutes of deep sleep, then something is wrong. You know, you're not sleeping properly. And a lot of people think, you know, that their sleep is fine just because they are sleeping or they're in bed for a certain amount of hours, but that's not the case. As you will very quickly learn when you start tracking your sleep, you could be in bed for 10 hours, but you're only getting half an hour of deep sleep, which is not enough. Equally, you could be in bed for six hours and get two hours of deep sleep. It really varies, and this is why it's important to track it, because then you can work out how to influence your sleep and how to actually get more deep sleep very important metric to know is how what percentage of your sleep hours are deep. Anyway, you can track all that with the app and uh, I'll put links to these in the description, but you can just type in Apple Watch 3. I'm sure you know which one it is. And oh, by the way, if you want to see it, this is the one. Um, I will uh, probably have overlaid some close-ups of this anyway on this video. 
but if you wanted to see it on me, that is uh, the Apple Watch. Oh yeah, so also it can be used to echo notifications from your iPhone. Now, this, by the way, won't apply to you if you have Android, um, because my app is not on Android, but if you do care about that, and if you do have my app and you have an iPhone, um, you can echo your notifications from your Apple Watch to your iPhone. Now, why would you care about that? Well, my app, which is called How To Lucid, gives you, among other things, it gives you an auto, auto shut off alarm for wake back to bed, which obviously when, you're, when it's echoed on the Apple Watch is a haptic alarm, so it doesn't actually make a noise, it just vibrates on your watch. Very useful if you live with a partner, if you sleep with someone else. You can wake yourself up to do wake back to bed without waking them up, and my app can do that. And, it, and like I said, it can echo, no, echo notifications from your phone to your watch. So the functionality works perfectly on the Apple Watch, even without me having to develop an Apple Watch app, which is just another bonus for me. But anyway, I forgot the, I forgot the cat was in this room. So another thing that my app can do is, and this is the main feature, is that it's a reality check reminder, meaning that you can set it up to randomly remind you to do a reality check throughout the day. Very important feature, and like I said, the Apple Watch 3, which is one of the older versions, can mirror notifications from your phone. What this means is you can have your phone in your pocket, but your, but your watch will get the notifications. So you can be walking around, going about your day, and then suddenly your wrist vibrates and it says, are you dreaming? You will hopefully see my notifications which are coming through on the watch. Very useful feature. So if you, just, if you wanted another reason to get this, um, and also if you already have an iPhone, because like I said, it doesn't work with Android, um, you can get that in the description, and then you just type into the App Store on iPhone, you just type in how to Lucid. You don't need to, there's no iPhone, um, sorry, there's no Apple Watch app, but if you get the app on your iPhone, it will echo notifications onto the watch. So basically it's the same as just having an Apple Watch app. Um, the functionality is all there. By the way, if you do have my app, I would really appreciate if you could leave a quick review of that, because yeah, it's quite hard to get App Store reviews, and. And yeah, it would really help me out. And if you do like it, I would love to hear what you think. If you have a criticism of it or something you don't like about it, I really want to hear those criticisms. I want to hear what you think because I'm working closely with my developer and I want to make sure that the How to Lucid app is the best one on the market, you know, out there. It's the best one. So I want to make it the best thing for you. So leave a comment on this video or just reply to an Instagram message, story, whatever. Find a way of leaving a comment uh, for me and I will try and improve the app going forward. So I hope you like this video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already and I'll see you next time.